So uh, while we were preparing for uh, this symposium, I mentioned that I was in the process of writing a play about suicide and suicide prevention. And um, so I was invited to uh, share uh, an excerpt of that with you today. And the reason is that I want to get contributions from peers and the people they work with. Um, this is going to be uh, a piece that's uh, told uh, by people uh, who um, have committed suicide and have written uh, have their writings before that, and um, people who have survived and uh, suicide attempts and people who have lost uh, friends and family. So anyway, uh, the, the name of the, the piece um, is gone too soon, but I just changed it this morning to stick around. I think that's a better title. Um, and uh, so the, the elements of the piece are as follows. Testimonials by survivors of suicide and suicide attempt and eulogies, writings by persons who took their lives, uh, mostly as a way to celebrate their lives, information about suicide prevention, including tips and best practices, featuring role plays and in certain settings, audience participation, suicide prevention resources uh, in the play and the program book, often accompanied by a post-show uh, presentation and Q&A, and the piece will allow for additional items of particular interest to a locality, someone who may have lost someone in a locality and wants to incorporate um, that in, into this piece. Um, so uh, the, the supposition is that theater, along with other artistic forms of expression, can be powerful ways of communicating important points that are sometimes hard to convey effectively in other settings. And I think the presentation we had earlier um, was a testament to that. Um, so here's some samples. Uh, first, I found an interesting basis for a role play, and this is from, this is called 17 Things Not to Say to Someone Who's Suicidal and What to stay, Say Instead. This is from The Mighty, which is on, an online community devoted to discussion of health concerns. Uh, and members were asked to share one thing that didn't help them when they were struggling with suicidal thoughts and what they wished others had said instead. So here are a few. Don't say suicide is selfish. I hate when someone tells me I was selfish because I attempted suicide. When we reach that point, we aren't being selfish. We feel hopeless, we are tired of the pain, we feel worthless, and we just want it to stop. Instead, acknowledge my feelings, tell me how much I matter to you. Don't say there are other people who have it worse than you. Say instead, the best thing that anyone said to me was something along the lines of, is there anything I can do or how can I help you? I don't need judgment. I need someone willing to sit with me and be there for me. At times, that looked like someone just sitting in silence with me or listening to me scream and cry. Other times, it looked like someone driving me to the ER and sitting with me until I was taken back. We're short of time, so I'm going to skip a little bit. Uh, here's a testimonial by Jen Carner, uh, excerpted by, uh, from um, livethroughthis.org. Then when I was 17, one of my first girlfriends and I broke up, and then two weeks after that, my house was broken into. My computer was stolen, my TV was stolen, my game systems were stolen. Everything that I used as a distraction from everything else that was going on, it was all gone. That sort of spiraled me even worse into what I was going on at the time, and then I got into a night where the depression got real bad. It's like, kind of like there's this other thing that lives inside of my skin and I can feel it, and it's like my skin is too tight to contain all of me anymore. It makes me really, really twitchy. So at the time, I tried all of my regular coping mechanisms. I tried to write, and I tried to read a book. I called like 30 different people, and nobody was home on that particular night. And then I attempted suicide. I got really lucky in that I had sent out a last email letter saying goodbye to a lot of my friends, and one of them got it almost immediately and called 911, and they called me. And they kept me on the phone until the police got there. I spent a week at Calvert County Memorial Hospital in their juvenile psych unit, which is an amazing unit. By the way, fantastic staff. Everybody was freaking fantastic. Then I got really lucky and I started doing this thing. I started LARPing, live action role play. I know it sounds ridiculous. 
I met this awesome group of people who were also kind of damaged. They kind of helped me pull myself back together and started getting my shit together and moving on and being a support system. And they're pretty much the most amazing people I've gotten the chance to be associated with. So again, I'm going to edit that a little bit because we're uh, short for time. So this is what inspired me to think about doing this piece. Um, in 1976, I first heard the song Gracias a la Vida, or Thanks to Life, a celebration of life which also speaks to its sorrows, as the title track on an album by Joan Baez. I soon learned more about the composer, the Chilean singer-songwriter Violeta Parra. She was a major force in the Nueva Cancion movement, which revived traditional folk music in Latin America and blended it with lyrics promoting social change. It was not till years later, however, that I discovered she had taken her life in 1967, a year after she recorded this song. Why she did so is not exactly known, but she had suffered from depression throughout her life, and her suicide came after a breakup with a musician who was likely the one referred to in her song. So I'm going to sing uh, some verses from this, because again, we're, we're short, but you'll get the idea. Gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto. I'm going to translate this, by the way. Gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto. Me ha dado al oído que en todo su ancho graba noche y días, grillos y canarios, martillas, turpinas, ladridos, chubascos, y la voz tan tierna de mi bien amado. Thanks to life which has given me so much. It gave me hearing that in all its breath records night and day crickets and canaries, hammers and turbines and bricks and storms and the tender voice of my beloved. Gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto, me ha dado el sonido y el abecedario con el a las palabras que pienso y declaro, padre, amigo, hermana y luz alumbrado, la ruta del alma del que estoy amando. Thanks to life that has given me so much. It has given me sound and the alphabet with them, the words that I think and declare, mother, friend, brother, and the shining light, the root of the soul from which comes love. Gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto, me ha dado la marcha de mis pies cansados. Con ellos anduve ciudades y charcos, playas y desiertos, montañas y llanos, y la casa tuya, tu calle y tu patio. Thanks to life, it has given me a, which has given me so much. It has given me the ability to walk with my tired feet. With them I have traversed cities and puddles, valleys and deserts, mountains and plains, and your house, your street, and your patio. Gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto, me ha dado la risa y me ha dado el llanto, así yo distingo, dicha de quebranto, los dos materiales que forman mi canto y el canto de estés, que es el mismo canto, y el canto de todos que es mi propio canto. Thanks to life, which has given me so much. It gave me laughter and it gave me crying. In this way, I distinguish happiness and pain, the two materials from which my songs are formed, and your song as well, which is the same song, and everyone's song, which is my very own song. Thank you. So. I don't think my um, uh, email address is in the program, but in any case, uh, if it isn't, it's paul.hammer at yale.edu. And if you would like to uh, get in touch with me and um, contribute or know someone who might like to contribute to this, uh, I'd be very grateful. <laughs>